Okay, we're going to go on to part 47. This was called Line 2 Alien UFO Study Wow Virgo PSR. And then a space, so there's B1257 plus 12 radio signals. So the next part of our equation is the next line down on the wow thing here. See? Circled in red. 11211. That's 1 divided by 1211 equals 0 0.00082576382. So I do that, and that was the calculation I got the first time I did it. And I did it December 29th, 2011, 9.08 p.m. And for some reason, I don't know why that number came up, but it's the wrong number. So the good thing is I didn't have a lot of information on this page. I I came back in on yesterday, January, yeah, redid it, and now I get a different number. So, of course, I'm not too happy with myself with that one. So it's 0 0.0008, okay? So the wavelength spectrum is what comes up with that number. And there's a wavelength throughput. It's pasted from www.sofia.usra.edu and then it's science proposals, basic science filter. So if you Google wavelength thought put Sophia, S-O-F-I-A, I'm sure it'll come up. And there's all the numbers. See the numbers here? The point is 0008. That's the number that is in relation to this number here. I still don't know what it means. Okay, so I don't know what wavelengths are yet. So what I did find is some keywords, and I've pointed them out here. I've got three extra planets orbiting this PSR. 1257 plus 12 is a pulsar. Constellation of Virgo, two planets orbit around that same code number. Okay, here's a picture of it. Artist's impression of the planets orbiting this... Uh, number here. Pulsar. There's my wow theory. There's some details about it. This is my thoughts. I somehow did these calculations incorrectly a few weeks ago. I corrected them today and found new information in regards to the equation I figured out. I look at the numbers and see what the mathematical fraction is and then I google the answer to see what comes up. It's fascinating to find that many of the components listed are used for space satellite and rockets for NASA's latest inventions as well as theories and scientists who have recently discovered and written about their tests and findings in 2011. Now, isn't that strange? That stuff, this is from a signal from 1977. And you guys are now discovering some of the things that are coming up in it in 2011. It's just been recently invented. That blows me right away, okay? The data in some cases is just a theory waiting to be proven. It will be exciting if you can take bits and pieces from the data I am about to share with you. I hope you can build the faster spaceship and make sure you let me know if it's based on any of my calculations, the idea girl. Okay, so this is the search results from the first equation that turns out to be the wrong one in the end. It's cool what comes up though. Man's first impressions on how to fly from the early 1900s. So that first number that I talked about up here, this is 0008257 blah 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 the wrong number I was like all excited because <laughs> this is my first second line and it's telling me how man started the history of man flying from the early 1900s thoughts ideas dreams and theories written by our early greats in history people whose thoughts written in the early 17th century became a reality in January 2012 there's actual documentation of people that had theories from the 17th century written as students' paperwork, and we are now discovering that this stuff is true. I started this project December 2011, the idea girl. Okay, so this is the aviation history. Let's go there. It's flightglobal.com. This is so cool. Anyways, if you're into aviation and you want to look at the history of it, there's all these like PDF things. But tells you about the air cooled engines, normal output, name or type, maker, or number of cylinders, I guess, stroke bore ratio, compression ratio, BMEP pounds per square inch, 
piston speed weight isn't that cool yeah and you go back here and it's like a PDF file here see so you want to Google aviation history from flight global archives but actually let's go back to the very beginning this is what it looks like it's got a hundred years of aviation history as it appeared in the original pages of a flight magazine from 1909 to 2005. Isn't that cool? Anyways, that's where that goes. Okay, so that was from the, the first set of calculations. Now here's the new stuff. This is even better. <laughs> when I actually got the 0008 number, we have NM nanometers, 10 to the 9 meters, 1 micron equals this. So fiber optic operational wavelengths is what comes up and it's talking about different fibers and frequency spectrum relationships in typical applications so spectrum is the colors of a planet and it tells you if the planet that they find in outer space has certain colors it tells them whether or not it's habitable or inhabitable okay and this is just a basic graph that I found. It says ultraviolet, far and near, visible light. That's what we can see with our eye. So we have violet, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. This is us here. And this, I don't know what these numbers mean here. Then it's got fiber octet C note, infrared, near, metal, far. Okay. And then I say rainbows are visible light because they're different colors, right? And then we have cosmic rays, gamma rays, x-rays. So x-rays are something that we can pick up. Gamma rays, cosmic rays. That's also, okay, sorry, these are these three here. That's visible light. And then microwaves, radio waves, and long electrical oscillations. And these are 10 to the power of something. Wavelengths, NMs, and C notes, okay? So I look up here. we got an extrasolar planet. That's what it looks like. It's all red with something around it. So planet formal hot B in set against formal hot interplanetary dust cloud imaged by the Hubble Space Telescope coronograph. Now again, you know where I got all this from? This little number, 0 0.0008. Okay. When I do a Google search, I look at anything and everything that has to do with space when it comes up. So this else. This other thing comes up. The three no planets of the star HR 8799 as imaged by the Halley Telescope. The light from the central star was blanketed out by a vector vortex coronograph. So that's what it looks like. A, B, or C, B, C, D, sorry, and that's a star. This thing here says 2 mass J044144 is a brown dwarf with a companion about 5 to 10 times the mass of Jupiter. It is not clear whether this companion object is a sub round dwarf or a planet. So these are old photos that they took before. Now we've got a new telescope, the James Webb telescope that's coming out. That's because it's come out in 2018. It's going to be a lot more clear. You'll be able to see this stuff way better. Coronographic image of AB Pictoris showing a companion bottom left, which is either a brown dwarf or a massive planet. The data was obtained on March 16, 2003 with NINCO, NAC. Oh, on the VLT using a 1.4 arcsec oculating mask on top of AB Pictoris. An extrasolar planet or exoplanet is a planet outside of our solar system. There's a total of 716 such planets have been identified as of December 22, 2011. Okay, just for the record, that was December 22, 2011. According to the Kepler telescope, that just the data that's coming back as of June, January the 12th, they found over 50,000 habitable planets so far. So we've gone from 716 planets that we found over to, to 50,000. That's how many we've found. Isn't that amazing? Now it is now known that a substantial fraction of stars have planets, including perhaps half of all sun-like stars. It follows the tens of billions of exoplanets must exist in the Milky Way galaxy alone. So basically they're saying that if you find a star, you look around it, you'll probably find a planet nearby. And they look at the colors of that planet to see whether it's habitable or not. Okay, so my thoughts. When I started doing this, I didn't know anything about outer space. Seriously. I look up at the stars each night. I can identify the moon, Cyrus, Orion's belt, the big and little dipper, and that's about it. 
Most of this terminology is completely new to me and probably to some of you. We shall learn things as we go along on this journey of almost 100 videos based on some words from a meditation, an alien signal received called WOW, in my attempts to contact those that live in other universes just so I can help to prove that they exist once and for all. Lastly, all of this was simply to tap into that alien intelligence we've all wanted to be a part of and now we can. Joining forces with our brothers and sisters around the world, we can build something all together. Just as the Bible story goes about the Tower of Babel, where God says in his holy word, if they all join together as one, nothing can stop them. Above are some examples of the types of light and things that SETI and other scientists look for through telescopes, satellite data, and more to determine if there are habitable planets out there. To study stars, how they are formed, break apart, and when and how evolution began in the Milky Way in our solar system. And down here, oh, remember that number, PSRP125712? I googled it to find out what on earth that meant. And let's see, what is it? It is in the constellation of Virgo. Now, the funny thing is, when I looked up the constellation of Virgo, I was in for a big surprise. I thought that that little boxy star thing was the actual um, sign for Pegasus, not knowing that it was actually Virgo. The designation PSR B1257 plus 12 refers to its coordinates in the B1950.0 epoch. It is located roughly 2,000 light years from Earth. 2,000. So that's actually further away than the Kepler planets because the Kepler system they're saying is 600 light years away. It was discovered by the Polish astronomer Alexander Wolfskin in 1990 using the Arcebo R radio telescope. It is a millisecond pulsar, a kind of neutron star, and was found to have anomalies in the pulsation period, which led to the investigations as to the cause of the irregular pulses. It has a rotation period of 6.22 milliseconds. Okay. In 2007, it was confirmed that three extrasolar planets over orbit the pulsar. So that's where they found it in 2007. So in 1990, they discover this star. And then in 2007, they discover that there's three planets that go around this star. And this, again, is from line two of our well signal. Okay, we'll go on to line three next.